Hello Drone Racers, I'm Mark and today on Drone Racer 101 we are going back to 2015. Why are we going back to 2015? Well I actually just received this drone for review and it is chock full of the latest and greatest 2015 technology. Inside of here we have a CC3D flight controller built into an all-in-one flight board with 20 amp ESCs, four of them, and it is a four in one, which is actually kind of innovative, running Simon K. Supposedly it supports one shot, but I couldn't actually even get that to work. Also, we don't have one measly wire to hook up your receiver. We have six. Yes, PWM technology. Check out these LEDs. Those are humongous. Those are actually pretty cool. I, I kind of like those. These are 2204, 2150 KV motors, which actually isn't too bad because these are six inch props here. They are 6045 props. And probably the biggest thing for 2015 is it actually supports a 4S battery. It actually recommends a three or 4S, 1400 to 2300 milliamp hour LiPo battery. Back in the day, it wasn't unusual for me to use a 3S 2200. So that's not all that far out there. So why am I reviewing this? Well, because this is for sale brand new today. Someone's probably actually ordered one of these and then gets it and has no idea what to do. So I'm gonna do some quick run throughs on how to get this to work. I even had to learn some new things because this actually uses LibrePilot. I've never used it before. But there are some cool things about it. If by the end of this, for whatever reason, you want one of these, it's like 140 bucks and it looks cool. I mean, it does look cool. I, I like the looks of it a lot. I imagine there's somebody who doesn't know how old this design is that might buy this and is probably gonna need some help getting it set up. So that's what we're gonna do today. I have hovered this, so I made sure it at least functions, but that was last night in the dark. So now that it's daylight, I'm gonna make one more change and I'll show you the software and some basics of how to get it set up. And then we'll take it outside and. And see if it flies it should fly it's just old so when you get this there are two sets of wires attached one set comes out this side and is actually your PWM connections the other one is a set of four wires that comes out of here which is designed for connecting to telemetry I just took that wire off because I'm not exactly sure how that one's supposed to go but on this side I've got it connected here and I've got it connected into an X8R so this is going to be one of my longest range drones probably as odd as that is and it's connected one wire to each of the ports that's what these old receivers are for you see one of these wires has a white red and black so that's actually what's powering the receiver with five volts and then each of the other wires goes in and you can see my connections so I've got blue yellow brown orange I'm gonna call that orange and then black so six channels. If you look online, most of these have a green instead of the brown. So that's this is the order that I set it in and this is T-A-E-R uh, in my radio and it works. They actually did a pretty good job with this design. There's an opening in the side here that gives you easy access to the USB port right there. That's where we'll connect and run the software. So I will include a link down below where you can download LibrePilot if you end up needing this. You can also load clean flight or beta flight onto this but for today just to get it working I actually kind of wanted to try this software one of the great things about this software is it actually includes a vehicle setup wizard and if you walk through this while it's connected it will ask you everything that you need in order to get this working it will check the channels it will calibrate them ESC's it will check the radio to make sure all the channels are set up and working and reversed properly and it actually takes care of all of that I've heard Joshua Bardwell talk about the desire for adding a setup wizard to some of these other software packages like clean flight beta flight that we're using now now i understand why because it makes it really easy for a new user to get set up in this case what i'm going to do now is go ahead and go into configuration we'll take a look so here is the setup for the flight controller the vehicle to make sure your channels are all set right one of the things i think is going to happen is my rates are going to be too low by default but i'm not going to change that because i i, I don't know how and I wanna make sure it works right. So inputs, the one thing I do wanna change here is I've got inputs, so here I've set all my channels and got everything set up so it's all going correctly. It even has you calibrate the radio to make sure your center points and everything are right. I was able to set my switches with my flight mode and my arming on the same switches that I use in beta flight. Fail safe is set so it will drop out of the sky. So here's where I wanna make a change. I have three modes on my switch and I have attitude which is angle mode and yaw is axis lock. So on the first mode it will lock that in place. I don't want that, I want my yaw to be rate mode. So then on my second one, I want horizon, which they call ratitude. I mean, how it's ratitude, that's awesome. And then my third, I want rate mode. So this should be the same as angle, horizon, and 
rate mode or acro mode. There are some additional options that for today we're not gonna get into, but that should set it up so I can do my typical test flight. What's gonna be weird is there's no air mode. I'm gonna have to get used to that. So I'm just gonna save it. So now that's what I wanted to set up. There's a lot of other options here. I'm not even gonna go into a CC3D. If you need that, I'm gonna refer you to Painless360, which is one of the channels I watched a lot when I was getting started. And he still has videos on how to get the CC3D up and working. I actually used one of them last night because I couldn't find the wizard, that big obvious button on the front page. I, I, I couldn't find it. But once I saw his video, and then he also explained what Ratitude mode, because I, I mean, yeah, that's obvious, Ratitude. Anyway, let's go fly this thing. Okay, so I've got a fully charged 3S battery on here now. And I can't arm. Why can't I not arm? There we go. Took a few tries there. So there we go. It sounds smooth. See how fast it is. Ooh, look at the crazy power. Already have some prop wash. Nice. Oh yeah, crazy power. Now this is a 3S. So now this horizon mode. I have to remember I don't have air mode, so let's see. Oh, whoa. I guess I didn't need to turn up my rates. That's actually pretty fast. Oh yeah, no air mode, don't forget. That actually doesn't do too bad. <laughs> Huh, let's check, uh, let's get away from me. Check rate mode. That looks pretty good. You know what, overall, I think it's gonna work. Okay, no OSD, we can live with that. Whoa, what's your deal? Try that again. Whoa, come on. So, total lack of power is weird. Look at the jello. So there's rate mode. I have to remember how little power I've got. Oh yeah, feel the jello. Makes me hungry. Holy cow. Oh, this is what it used to be like flying. This is just how it used to go. This is how fast things used to be. Oh yeah, look at that. And back in the day, I would have been happy with this because this is really what it was like level of performance that we got whoa all right so let's try a 4s though see what it does with that well it powered on without exploding on 4s there we go more speed there it goes rate mode so i don't know what power the vtx is on right now it'll actually go up really high but it's uh i'm gonna default I don't know what it's defaulting to. And I had to tear the whole thing apart. You've got to tear the whole top off to change the power or the channel with the dip switches. Yeah, dip switches. So, uh, I mean, it's a six inch. It's floaty. Whoa, okay, no air mode, I forgot. Oh, this thing is just spectacularly crappy. Holy cow, we are so spoiled today. Whoa! Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that was close. Don't hit anything. These props probably would just explode. Oh, I can't believe... Let's see. Oh, there it is. Yeah, nice. Oh, hey, yeah, no... It it decided it wanted to level out there. Whatever it wants to do. It'll just uh, it'll just do that. You could probably put a GoPro mount on here if you're out of your mind. Yeah, it just uh, kind of went that way on its own. We're gonna call that a flight. So now I remember why it was so much harder to fly when I got started. And actually this flight controller is way better than the one I started with. I started with a KK2 and man, that was bad. That was bad. This was actually okay. I mean, I'm not going to recommend this to anyone, but hey, if you got it or if you want to just say, ah, you old geezers complain about your old drones, I would have been fine with that. 
Well, buy one of these and find out what it's like. But if you found this useful, leave a like and a comment down below and let me know if you want to see this drone updated to clean flight or beta flight or something because this flight controller will run it. We can still load that on there. I'm not sure how new I can get it and how many features it would do. Definitely not going to get new enough for dynamic filters, I don't think. Nah, it won't. It can't pull that off. This is an F1 processor. But could I get air mode? With air mode, this would be a whole different animal. But I'm also not sure it's worth the time. It was definitely a fun experiment though. As soon as I took this out of the box and saw what it was, like, okay, I'm, it's not new, it's not fancy, it's not cool, but I, I've gotta get it working just because it was a new fun challenge. So until next time, remember, sometimes you can teach an old dog new tricks and sometimes you can't. I mean, it's a little better, I guess. Ooh, yeah, prop wash. Jeez. <laughs> it's a little rough to land too.